the among us who, have, who, who could become victims of a foreign economy in faith. And Jesus Christ said, as you've done it the least to one of these, you've done it unto me. We have coming today to lead us in our prayer. I believe we are partners with you all in the legislature in trying to do what is best for our prophet. I have not come to do away with them, but to make them, to make When the legislators are running for, for the, their seats again. There's a beautiful campus in Troy, the main campus in Birmingham, and a beautiful campus. so used to the government handling all these things for the last 30, 40, or 50 years that they got out of the habit of doing what we used to do, look after our own uh, who were underprivileged and poor and wretched. It was probably too big a job for just the churches alone. But I do say that I think that the churches can do more. And I think if we have meetings, as you suggested, Doctor, that we can bring some in to some of this temporary suffering that I hope is temporary for those who are hungry and wretched and poor. The governor says the current hard times. <laughs> As you know, the proceeds go to Alabama Spies here with us today, and he's got a few words to say. <laughs> Mr. George. <laughs> oh. Come in, Mr. Lynn. Welcome, welcome to Auburn. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you, I've, I've already told them that you're going to be the next head football player. I'm dying. All right. This is not a good Thank you very much. I'll good. see all y'all at the show and at the golf course, okay? <clears throat> we, uh, I, I, I hope that this hadn't been blown out of proportion as far as um, the significance of this, of this meeting. But... Of course, I've been watching our football team all spring, and some of you have watched them on. unfortunate that it takes that to get somebody to come down there to visit us and to look at us. And attorney Bert Rice. There are those that are against, but I would say the majority of the people in this community probably would think that this is an execution that should come.
Nelson Ruaz four years ago. And the only way his execution can be stayed is by the United States Supreme Court or Governor George Wallace. This is Norman Lincoln, WSFA TV News, Holman Prison. I belong to the Christian faith, and Jesus Christ. We're living in critical times. We are trying our best to outstand the least of one of these. You it's long. We're talking about four and a half million dollars under the Medicaid program, and the other less dollars that's going to be spent by this unconscious. Sure. Uh, 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 And the father said, well, son, we... Appear that the pressure is finally getting to him. He began to fidget. In fact, when he was reading a newspaper, he would just uh, laugh at something that seemingly was not all that funny in the newspaper. This isn't being taped, is it? Okay. He said emotionally it's a little harder this time than it was last time because he does not want to die. But he feels hopeful that this day will come. Uh, can you confirm or deny anything like that? All I can say there, and this is, uh, is simply that the man himself uh, does, has indicated that to the chaplain. Right now, all we have to go on is what prison officials and other visitors tell us about Evans' feelings. The condemned man decided not to have a news conference today, which is in contrast to four years ago when he openly sought media and public attention. This is Norman Lumpkin, WSFA TV News, Holman Prison.
In now that the information that we need will be forthcoming from the police department. when we started and that's continued. There have been some minor skirmishes, but those have been resolved and we're optimistic that we'll go forward with no problems. This ritualistic, premeditated build, the expectations of those who created the first penitentiary, uncivilized act of punishment. It seeks premeditated... We do not condone the actions of John Evans. In denying the humanity of John Evans, we capital punishment makes it possible for human error and prejudice to send innocent to
So now it appears that for all practical purposes, the only man who can stop the execution of John Lewis Evans is Governor George Wallace, who has listened to both sides of the argument over capital punishment, including a last-minute in-person appeal from Evans' family members. The governor's office will be open tonight, staffed and ready to get the word to Holman should the governor intervene. Chris Grimshaw of our staff is at the governor's office uh, where uh, the staff is preparing for this night leading up to the execution. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if Chris is there. Chris, can you hear me? If you are, what's, uh, what's going on at the governor's office? Bob, I can hear you. At this time, there's a great deal of pressure that has been applied to Governor Wallace throughout the day. There have been a number of phone calls throughout the day, hundreds of them according to his aides. Those aides say that a majority of those phone calls have been urging the governor not to grant clemency, not to stop the execution. On the other side of the coin, the governor has had several meetings this afternoon. Uh, one meeting was with uh, two bishops. One was an Episcopalian, another a Catholic, both of them asking the governor to stop the execution. Late this afternoon, John Lewis Evans' sister met with Governor Wallace uh, along with the attorney. They were taken to the governor's mansion for a last-minute request to convince the governor to use his authority to grant clemency. She met with the governor for about 25 minutes but wouldn't talk to us when she left. The governor's office says nothing has changed since earlier this week when the governor said he had not seen any evidence that would convince him to stop the execution. But just in case, forms of communication are being kept open between the governor and Holman Prison just in case things have changed. Bob? Thanks very much. Chris Grimshaw, live at the governor's office. Family members are... The life of condemned murderer John Lewis Evans has been spared, at least temporarily. Federal Judge Emmett Cox in Mobile just about a half hour ago granted a temporary stay of execution for Evans. He was scheduled to die just after midnight. However, lawyers on Attorney General Charles Graddock's staff are in Atlanta now attempting to get the stay dissolved. They say that the judge's paperwork has not been filed, and when it is filed in Atlanta, then attorneys for Charles Graddock will file a motion to set the stay aside. They say that the time frame for the stay is uncertain, that it is not 24 hours, as reports have said. Norman Lumpkin is in Atmore at Holman Prison now, and we are going to... Well, we were going to attempt to try and talk with Norman. We'll try that a little later on. He's been covering the story of the uh, impending execution all day long, and we will ask him a little later what the reaction is from the people there. A group of people are holding a candlelight vigil at the governor's mansion in Montgomery, and Tom Foreman is standing by live. Tom, what's the reaction to the Evans temporary stay at the governor's mansion now? Gina, about 35 people gathered here in front of the governor's mansion to try to convince Governor Wallace to stay the execution. When they learned that a stay had at least, at least been granted temporarily, there have been mixed, uh, mixed emotions about it, some confusion, obviously, since it's not really clear what will or will not happen tonight. Uh, Sister Rosalind Snyder, one of those who's gathered here tonight, what is, uh, where does your group stand at this point? When we came, we came to pray, and we came with a great deal of hope that something would be done to prevent this from uh, happening. Um, we're still hoping, we're still praying, we're delighted, of course, to hear that at least this one step has been taken. Um, I'm sure that we'll go on uh, praying and hoping that um, it can be extended and that it can be handled and that we won't have to see an execution. All of us are here because we believe very strongly that capital punishment is wrong, that it doesn't serve any good purpose, that it's simply another act of violence which only causes the violence in our state to grow. It seems that if any way at all this could be turned around and John Evans' life could be spared, that would be an act of nonviolence that could cause a great deal of goodness to spread through the state, and I think that that's the hope that's in the heart of each one of us here tonight. So, Gina, that's the situation here. Some people will be staying here at the governor's mansion until they receive word as to exactly what uh, John Evans' fate will be this evening. Back to you, Gina. And tonight, officials at the University of Tennessee in Memphis say they have a prospective liver donor for 13-month-old Brandon Hall. Brandon has already undergone one transplant. As we told you earlier, Norman Lumpkin is in at Moore at Holman Prison. He's been covering the impending execution all day long. We've got Norman on the phone now. Norman, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Our first question is, 
what does this stay mean and how long is it for? There's some confusion up here. We have basically the same situation here um, at the prison. There's some confusion as to whether or not the stay means uh, from now until 11.59 tomorrow night or whether or not it means uh, that Judge Cox in Mobile uh, has said that uh, he couldn't make a decision before uh, 12.01 midnight, uh, that uh, he could possibly make a decision by 3 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, or 1 a.m. So uh, from what I can understand, it means that uh, the stay is on until the judge makes his decision, and he has until 11.59 tomorrow night. Now, uh, Ron Tate, the spokesman for the prison, said that uh, it was on until 11.59 tomorrow night, and his interpretation, to my understanding, is that uh, the sentence could be carried out any time after midnight from now until 11.59. Uh, there's, there's a little confusion. However, prison officials have said that the procedure leading up to the execution is on hold for, for right now. Okay, what kind of uh, reaction has there been from uh, Evans or his attorneys or his family? Have you seen any of them? So far, okay, we, we're situated about um, uh, four miles north of the prison. Uh, we haven't heard anything from the family, nor have we heard anything from Evans. The uh, spokesman, Ron Tate, uh, has gone up to Holman, and he's expected to be back shortly to, to, to uh, have a news conference to tell us exactly uh, what the state means, what the reaction from Evans is, and his family. Okay, and we uh, will clear up the confusion between what the Attorney General staff is saying and from what he's saying, I hope. I hope so, too. <laughs> okay, thanks, Norman. Uh, keep us up to date. Thank you. That was Norman Lumpkin. He's in at Moore at Holman Prison. We will keep you up to date on what the situation is with the impending execution. And now, coming up, community relations. Uh, as we told you earlier, a temporary stay has been granted to John Lewis Evans, and we now have an interview with Governor Wallace's legal advisor, Ken Wallace, about that stay. Gina, we are down here at the Capitol with uh, the governor's legal advisor, Ken Wallace. Can you explain to us now where the situation is with the uh, the Evans execution or the the stay on that? Tom, the uh, attorney for Mr. Evans has filed a petition for a stay of execution in the United States District Court in Mobile. Judge Emmett Cox considered the petition and there was a hearing tonight. The state was represented by the Attorney General, Mr. Graddock's office, uh, Ed Carnes, the Assistant Attorney General, was representing the state at that hearing. Judge Cox, as I am informed, has issued a temporary stay, uh, and I understand that the time limit on that is, is until further order of the court. That s temporary stay is being challenged by Attorney General Graddock's office and Ed Carnes, the Assistant Attorney General. Uh, at the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals in Atlanta at this moment, I believe. They are presenting it either by conference call or otherwise in Atlanta. It is possible, as I understand it, that the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals could rule on that at any time, certainly before the, the night is out, perhaps even before the time that is currently set for execution. So would, we don't would know mean, that. Would that mean that the execution can still take place tonight or when? It is my understanding that if the stay is entered, the execution could still take place on time or at some point in time tomorrow after 1201 if in fact no stay is issued by the governor or by the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, I would also expect that if the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals declined to dissolve Judge Cox's stay, temporary stay, that uh, Attorney General Graddock and uh, Assistant Attorney General Carnes would file a further application for dissolution of that stay with the Supreme Court, probably also tonight. Okay, so it is, so at this point where it seems to stand is that uh, the execution is temporarily stayed, although there is really no way of telling at this point how long the uh, temporary means in this case, whether the execution will in fact uh, still take place tonight or it may take 
place anytime within the next 24 hours. Back to you, Gina. Thanks, Tom. That is Tom Foreman uh, reporting live from the Capitol. He's talking with Governor Wallace's legal advisor, Ken Wallace. And coming up, we'll tell you about some... Thanks, Rick. Um, we are going to continue now with coverage of the... Um, with, uh, with our coverage of the uh, temporary stay given to John Lewis Evans. We've got Norman Lumpkin on the phone now. He's in Atmore at Holman Prison. He's talking with Commissioner Fred Smith, Prison Commissioner Fred Smith. Norman, are you there? Yes, I am. To, to clear up some of the confusion about what the situation here is here at, at the Holman Station near Holman Prison, I have here uh, Prison Commissioner Fred Smith, and he can explain what the situation is legally uh, what the timetable is, if the stay is uh, kept on or if it's overruled by the 11th Circuit in, in, in Atlanta. Uh, Commissioner Smith. Commissioner Smith, this is Fred Gina. Smith Hi, Commissioner. This is Gina Gregory at Channel 12 in Montgomery. Um, we've had a lot of confusion over just what the stay does mean and if the execution can go ahead and take place tonight. What do you know so far? I'm sorry, Gina. I can't hear. Okay, uh, we've had some confusion over just what this temporary stay means, and okay. if, if in fact, uh, the execution could be carried out tonight, what do you know? Yes, Judge Cox has just advised me that the 11th Circuit in Atlanta will definitely decide tonight. If they decide not to give a stay, it will take approximately one hour for me and my staff to prepare the inmate for the execution and it will be carried out at whatever time uh, this decision is made. The uh, temporary stay. Do you know if in fact lawyers are going to be going to the Supreme Court and if that happens, uh, how long will that be? What all does that mean? Okay. If it is not postponed, uh, or if it is postponed rather, the legalities will be settled, and at that time, the Alabama Supreme Court will set another execution date. Okay. What, uh, what reaction have you uh, seen or heard from Evans himself, from uh, his attorneys or his family? Okay. I have not been with his family whatsoever, but I was just uh, in Holman, and the state of mind of uh, John Lewis Evans is... Uh, excellent. As a matter of fact, while they were sh having him showered for the execution, when I left, he was uh, laughing and joking with the officers. Uh, was this something he expected? I mean, his, his attitude is... I'm sorry, uh, Gina, I, I cannot hear. Oh, okay. I was just asking you if this was something he expected because his attitude is uh, kind of light. I, we, we have no idea of that whatsoever. I just know that he is in an excellent frame of mind, laughing and joking. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Prison Commissioner Fred Smith. And coming up, a Russian kitty cat gets a new home. Hot. And... Good evening from the WSFA TV newsroom. I'm Bob Howell. We interrupt the David Letterman program for the latest update on what's happening with the impending execution of John Lewis Evans III at Holman Prison in Mobile. If you are just joining us and have not heard the news, earlier this evening a federal court judge in Mobile granted a temporary stay of that execution. Immediately, Alabama authorities went to the Federal Appeals Court in Atlanta, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, and asked that that uh, order by the federal judge, Emmett Cox and Mobile, be dissolved. We have just received word by way of Governor Wallace's legal advisor, Ken Wallace, that the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals in Atlanta has upheld that temporary stay. Tom Foreman of our staff is standing by for a live report from the Capitol. He's been sitting in on the conversations with the legal advisor throughout the evening. Uh, Tom, exactly what is the situation at the Capitol and the legal office right now? Okay, Bob, I was over in the Attorney General's office just a matter of minutes ago when the call came in from a clerk with the 11th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in Atlanta. And I listened as the Attorney General was told that his motion to dissolve the stay of the ex execution had been denied that, in a sense, upholding the stay. And the Attorney General's office was prepared for this. Uh, they have already, at this moment, attorneys representing the Attorney General's office in Washington, D.C., are busy contacting the U.S. Supreme Court. They are going to file what they've called an extraordinary appeal 
which would once again try to dissolve that stay. So the Attorney General's office is in action again at this point. Uh, they started immediately as soon as they heard word that the uh, stay had been upheld and that the execution, as at least for now, is off. They have started action once again to try to dissolve that stay. It's before the, it will be before the U.S. Supreme Court, uh, if all goes as planned by the Attorney General's office. They feel that they have a very good chance before the U.S. Supreme Court. They think that before that court, uh, the stay will be dissolved and the execution could still take place within the next 24 hours. If nothing happens on that, if the uh, stay were to hold up through the next 24 hours, the indication is that if uh, John Lewis Evans is not executed within the next 24 hours uh, and no other attorney acts on uh, what is before the U.S. Supreme Court now or what is going before the U.S. Supreme Court now, at that point it would go back to the Alabama Supreme Court and a new date of execution would have to be set. However, the Attorney General's office is hoping that will not be the case. As I've said, attorneys in Washington representing the Attorney General's office are at this hour trying to contact the U.S. Supreme Court. They've got all the paperwork there. They're trying to go through with the next step, once again, asking the U.S. Supreme Court through an extraordinary appeal to dissolve the stay, which the U.S., uh, the 11th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals upheld just minutes ago. So that is the situation right now. The Attorney General's office is busy trying to get that stay dissolved by the U.S. Uh, Supreme Court. Back to you, Bob. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, that was Tom Foreman. He was live in downtown Montgomery. Uh, as you heard him say, right now it appears that uh, for the time being, because of the federal court's decision, the appeals court in Atlanta, uh, the execution of John Lewis Evans, which was supposed to come off in about uh, 10 minutes, is temporarily blocked. Now the attorney general's office is in Washington once again trying to get the Supreme Court to uh, enter into the case and overrule the appeals court. Earlier in the afternoon, the U.S. Supreme Court, the entire court, had voted 7 to 2 not to interfere and not to stop that. Uh, the only other alternative for Evans and for his attorneys uh, was an appeal to a federal district court, which they did in Mobile, or perhaps a stay uh, from Governor George Wallace. Those were the only two avenues which were open from a legal aspect for uh, the Evans uh, case at this time. So as we have it right now, the execution is off, waiting word from the United States Supreme Court whether or not they will override the decision this evening by the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals in Atlanta, Georgia. If there are further developments this evening, while we are still on the air until 1.30 this morning, uh, we will bring you those updated uh, uh, pieces of information. Please stay tuned. This has been a WSFA-TV special report. We now return you to our regular programming in progress.
we will walk. The machines uh, adjacent to where the electric chair is, and it will remain open up. is over and we thank God again that man may continue to kill the flesh but he should never kill the spirit of man. I think it's a very sad day in this country, a very sad day in the state of Alabama that we still have public officials who still believe that this kind of action can correct another action and certainly we pray for those who, whose mind make these kind of decisions. The system through the habeas corpus but since all of the issues, identical issues are fact, Wayne Ritter when he took My thoughts tonight are certainly with the uh, family of Eddie Nasser uh, and his two little girls who suffered and has been suffering for a long period of time after having viewed their father being shot to death by John Lewis Evans. Uh, I think without a doubt what happened tonight in Atmore, Alabama <clears throat> is a clear message for Criminals who think they can go in to businesses in Alabama and rob them and murder people. That they can look forward to the use of capital punishment in Alabama. Uh, it's without a doubt, in my judgment, going to create a deterring effect. And I don't mind. to do that, but that is one of their, their goals, is to accomplish. Actually working uh, with the problems that are
that is one of their, their goals is to accomplish adequate funding and to support any type of legislation that's needed to do so. There are more in hot weather, revealing if I, I've done it in some groups and some sometimes the hotel people get very uncomfortable. Uh, I have a list, all the ugly words, all the nasty words we know, all the dirty words. And you can do that and have some of you tended to express trends. We find that wherever a woman is assaulted, she is likely to move from her apartment or home 50% of the time. There is the power rapist who seems to be on an ego trip. He stops when she does whatever he asks. He is, uh, he frequently, frequently will say, am I the best you ever had? And you know what you say if you're in that situation? What? Yes? I think you say it more convincingly. I think you say yes, sir. <laughs> he batters. He will urinate on the person, have her bark like a dog, have her pour him a drink, and then he'll pour it on her. Uh, cannot seem to get the anger out of his